The doctor said we have found what the problem is. A baby fights for survival. And she said he's got a brain tumor. With a family by his side. Even through chemo it can grow. And a promise by his bed. Sometimes I just look at him and I just say, thank you, God. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. Excuse me. Uh, we have a story on one of the silent killers, the thing that is eating people from the inside, and we'll tell you how to fix it. Mm -hmm. How that, about that? And it affects a lot more people Lots than more are even than, aware and, of it. And more diseases than you realize. And we've also got the fabulous dog Maggie, yeah. Princess Maggie. Who we might add has already eaten the top off of her leash today in the yeah, dressing room. Yeah, in the room. dressing so room. And, uh, should be she, interesting. <laughs> she didn't get my glasses, but she did a few days ago and <laughs> left uh, teeth marks in them. Well, anyhow, Batten down the hatches here on the yeah, set, it'll be fun. <laughs> well, still more threats from North Korea. Now it has moved a missile to its east coast, and it says it's going to launch a nuclear attack on the United States and spare no mercy. Well, the White House is downplaying the possibility of war, but even so, the United States is making it clear that it's ready to respond if it has to. Here's Charlene Israel. More than 28,000 American troops stand on high alert today near the border between North and South Korea. Two U.S. guided missile destroyers are now in place, and land-based missile interceptors are being dispatched to Guam. All signs that the U.S. is ready to act if North Korea decides to make good on its threats to attack. I think we should always be concerned when somebody's threatening our homeland and threatening our allies, and and uh, and it's causing. Uh, instability in the region. In its latest round of threats, North Korea says its military has been given a green light to wage an attack on the U.S. using nuclear weapons. And South Korea says the North has moved a missile with considerable range to its east coast. Officials say the missile is not capable of hitting the United States, but America is taking the threats seriously. Some of the actions they've taken over the last few weeks uh, uh, present a, a, a real and clear danger. It only takes uh, being wrong once. And I don't want to be the Secretary of Defense who was wrong once. The United States will defend and protect ourselves and our treaty ally, the Republic of Korea. Still, the top U.S. commander in the region says he's confident the threat will subside. We need to turn it down a few notches. The White House also continues to downplay an attack. Press Secretary Jay Carney says that while precautions are being taken, the behavior of North Korea represents a familiar pattern. Charlene Israel, CBN News. Well, there's no question that the family that runs North Korea is insane. They are paranoid, schizophrenic, whatever term you want to use. And the trouble is they've got nuclear weapons and they have a big army. But, but they're a tiny, tiny, pipsqueak little country. And uh, the people are suffering dreadfully. And so what they do is need to gin up the threat of war in order to hold their people in check and also to get the military to uh, go along with the leadership. That's what it's all about. But nevertheless, <clears throat> when they start talking about sending nuclear bombs to the United States with no mercy, uh, it's something that we have to take seriously. And I, I was in Korea. I was uh, there during the so-called Korean War. And I was stationed in North Korea, above the 38th parallel. We don't need ground troops in Korea the next time out. We should just flatten everything that's there. We should bomb Pyongyang and all those installations and let them know that, that, that there will be no mercy at our hands. And I think that's what has got to be communicated to those people. But they are crazy. You're dealing with madmen who have nuclear weapons. So it is serious, and yet it isn't serious. I mean, it's a ploy to get more money from us. But they're going about it the wrong way. Well, here at home, we have another example of hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars lost in some kind of a black hole. Lee Webb has that story from the CBN newsroom. Here's Lee. 
Pat, a new Inspector General's report found that $700 million of government relief money for victims of Hurricane Katrina were misspent or are simply missing. The Road Home Program awarded grants up to $30,000 to help homeowners rebuild their homes, but a quick tour of some New Orleans neighborhoods suggests many took the money and ran. The Department of Housing and Urban Development says the state is responsible for making sure the money was spent properly. It's now pressing Louisiana officials to recover that money. Republican Senator Tom Coburn, though, is pushing to make sure the same mistake doesn't happen with government aid to the victims of Superstorm Sandy in the Northeast. Coburn says as the federal government prepares to spend nearly $16 billion on recovery efforts related to Sandy, this is a mistake taxpayers and citizens affected by the storm can't afford to see repeated. Pat? Well, folks, I again was there uh, right after the storm hit. Operation Blessing had extensive operations. And I want to tell you, FEMA during that installation was as incompetent as any group of people could possibly be. You couldn't conceive of a situation where a group could make many more mistakes than they made. So <clears throat> huge amounts of waste, fields full of vehicles that weren't used, um, houses that weren't lived in. I mean, it was just an unbelievable amount of waste. And this is just an example of money just being sloshed out. But this is under the Department of Homeland Security. And it shows what happens when you take disparate agencies and in the name of efficiency, you just jam them all together. And that's what the Bush administration did. They jammed everything together and they said, we've got something wonderful. It's called Homeland Security. Nonsense. Lee? Pat, the Obama White House is pushing banks to make more home loans available to people with weaker credit. The Washington Post reports the idea is to strengthen the economic recovery. The White House believes not enough people are able to buy homes as the housing market recovers. That includes young people who want their first homes and people with credit records that were hurt in the recent recession. But critics warn the move could lead to the risky types of loans that caused the housing bubble and crash in the last decade. And taxpayers would be left holding the bag again. An Ohio school district has taken down a portrait of Jesus that has been on display there since 1947. The picture had been at a Jackson City Middle School. It was moved later to a local high school. The American Civil Liberties Union and the Freedom From Religion Foundation argued the picture unconstitutionally promoted religion. The school district fought back, but now they have decided to remove the portrait because of the potential cost of a federal lawsuit. The superintendent, Pat, says the district just couldn't roll the dice with taxpayer money on another court battle. Well, it just shows what a few fanatics can accomplish. Uh, a few who don't believe in anything have been able to dismantle our whole structure, of our whole infrastructure of religious faith. Our country is built on religious faith. As was said in that great decision of Zorak versus Clausen, we are a religious people whose institutions presuppose the existence of a supreme being. And <clears throat> the fact that our founding fathers would be offended by a picture of Jesus Christ is just appalling. I mean, so what, that is an unconstitutional establishment of religion. And, but these administrators won't fight. They, they, they don't have any backbones. Sure, it costs some money, but I imagine there are enough good people in Ohio who dip into their pockets and contribute some money to a legal defense fund. But uh, it's just outrageous what's happening. And um, if we don't stand up, the freedom from religion, whatever it, uh, company, whatever they could, uh, they call it, thank you very much. It, in my ear, foundation, <laughs> freedom from religion, and the uh, ACLU, they together have done everything they can to take away our religious faith in our country. Terrible, but we let them get away with it. Lee. Secretary of State John Kerry is heading to the Middle East for the third time in two weeks. He's trying to restart the peace talks between the Israelis and Palestinians. No one is expecting a breakthrough, but this his meetings with Israeli and Palestinian leaders represent the Obama administration's most sustained effort yet in the Middle East. Kerry's trip comes at a difficult time. 
Militants have fired several rockets from Gaza into southern Israel this week, and Israel has retaliated with airstrikes. Many Americans worry the U.S. government could use drones to spy on or even attack its own citizens. By contrast, the Israeli Defense Forces are using a relatively new type of drone to save Israeli and Palestinian lives. Chris Mitchell has that story. It's called Skylark, one of the world's smallest drones. It's the kind of tool becoming more and more crucial to the global war on terror. It's a game changer. Once, you know, they didn't know what, what was behind this house, what was behind this mountain. You know, now in two seconds, you know, and you can act accordingly. The IDF gave CBN News a rare look at this mini unmanned aerial system, or UAS, in the Negev Desert. The 13-pound Skylark is carried in a backpack to the field. Its goal is to assist the ground forces with live, intel from, with live intelligence from the next hill, the next corner, the next uh, alley. The unit can assemble the Skylark and launch it within eight minutes. It gives Israeli troops a new advantage in the field. And the unique thing is that they are actually walking in, in the field and uh, like every ground troops and uh, using uh, advanced technology. This high-tech drone is actually launched from a bungee cord into the wind. It doesn't take long before it's out of sight. It can fly up to 15,000 feet in the air for three hours at about 50 miles an hour and even faster if there's a good tailwind. Noam Goldstein is an officer in training. Right now, basically, with three people on the computer boat, each one of us has different jobs. Uh, basically, right here, he's, he's, the, he's actually flying the plane. He's in charge of giving all the commands. Uh, basically, everything that a plane does is on, under his control. Soldiers don't need flight experience to operate it. Only point the camera and the Skylark responds relaying real-time video day or night in all weather conditions. It can save troops from ambush, prevent civilian casualties on the enemy side, and solve legal questions because everything is recorded. It's a legal proof that there weren't civilians there, it was, it's really terrorist. According to the Skylark's developer and manufacturer, Elbit, the UAS is currently operated by NATO countries and others around the world including the UK in Iraq and Afghanistan. When Skylark is finished, the engine stalls, an airbag pops out, and the UAS drops to the ground. Mission accomplished. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, shift to Army Base, the Negev Desert. And here at home, Connecticut lawmakers have passed sweeping new gun laws for that state. Leaders from both political parties voted for the bill. It expands the current state ban on assault weapons. It requires background checks for all firearm sales, and it bans the sale or purchase of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. The bill also addresses mental health and school security measures. The governor is set to sign it today. Cancer and heart disease are the deadliest diseases in the U.S., but dementia is the most expensive. A new study from the RAND Corporation finds that the disease costs families and society up to $215 billion a year. The high cost comes from the care that's needed to get people with dementia through their daily lives. More than 4 million people are estimated to have some form of dementia. Alzheimer's, of course, is the most common. It is the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. Pat? Thank you very much. And. Uh... At this point of time, they have brought me, uh, just to let you know that I'm human and uh, I care for little animals. <laughs> or big ones. This is Maggie. She has gotten so she big. She is an Irish water spaniel and she is a very sweet dog. And sometimes she does tricks. All right, Maggie, I want you to lie down, honey. Maggie, here. Lie down. I'd rather chew my leash, Dad. Lie down. All right, roll over. Roll over. A girl. girl, Maggie. There you go. Oh, okay. she's gotten much better. Well, I know. I've got You've trainer. Been working with her. Maggie, it's here. No, it's not in the bag. <laughs> it's in my hand. All right, speak. 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 Speak louder. <laughs> well, it's almost speaking. Speak, Megs. Speaks. Speak. Maybe if you bark, she'll bark. No, well, I don't know. There, okay. <laughs> All right, the Maggie, here. Jump. Is All Maggie, right. look at you. All right, All right sit. Sit. Okay, now I just have to ask. Sit. Because what? she has eaten the top off of her leash in well, the early did. portion of well, the day. Well, she likes to chew. Does she, she still, still chew in your house? Oh, uh, she will chew anything that she can get her teeth onto. Here you go, buddy. 
Maggie, <coughs> there's, lie, lie down. There's a recommendation for a uh, uh, up. Lie down. <laughs> no, lie down and stay down there. Good girl, she Maggie. And how old is she now? She's about a year and two or three Look months. Look at All the right. size of All her right, Lie down. Pies. Roll over. All right. There you go. All right. Do you feed her? I mean, she's like desperate for these. She place. didn't have breakfast this morning. I, I thought Understandably, I'd keep her hi, honey. <laughs> yes, I know. I love your perm. Yeah. Isn't she pretty? All right, Maggie, jump. Oh, do it better than that. Come on, Maggie. Oh, you, you left me. Huh? She says the <clears> treats <throat> are gone. I'm out of here. That's right. I ate the whole bag. All right, come on, one more now, time. Whoa. Oh, Timmy, what are you? You're trying to kill my dog? <laughs> yeah, you are. Come on, Maggie. Maggie, come here. They, Come here. Here, here, buddy. One more time. This is the last little piece I got. Here. Now, what made you get this three? All right, jump. All right, sit down. They're very smart, and they are very loving, and they're, they're like clowns. They love to, have to play. And she is adorable. Isn't she cute? She is adorable. Okay. So anyhow, that's, that's our little animal treat for the day. <laughs> Princess Maggie. Mr. Humanitarian. <laughs> my, my humanitarian. I don't know if this is dog week or not. But well, it is now. Okay. <laughs> well, Go ahead. Coming up, something serious. They call it the silent killer. And it's the culprit behind ailments ranging from skin wrinkles to heart attacks. Find out what it is, what causes it, and how to stop it. And then later on, a 10-month-old is given a 10% chance at survival. Hear his story. That's all later on today's 700 Club. The epic event that touched the hearts of millions is yours to own. The Bible on Blu-ray and DVD today. You know, the Boone family has a lot to be thankful for. Oh, sure, at times our core values have been shaken and tested, but they've never failed us. The economic future has never been more uncertain than it is right now. Yet as I plan ahead for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I'm certain of one thing. My decision to leave them a golden legacy is right on the money. I have peace of mind knowing my family is going to be able to face an uncertain future with certainty and real hope with real money, gold. Why don't you call Swiss America for an important new CD and special report discussing the future of money with economist and author Craig R. Smith. It's free with this special TV offer. Rediscover gold. Ensure your family's future. Call Swiss America the gold standard. And you can tell them Pat Boone gave you the number. New Curves Complete makes losing fat easy as one, two, three. One, the Curves 30-minute circuit, where millions of women supercharge fat loss. Two, new customizable meal plans that show you how to cook in or eat out. And three, me, your Curves coach. Every week, I review your success and plan for more. Get exercise, meal plan, and coaching for $12.95 a week, plus a free $50 gift. Call 1-800-CURVES-30 to schedule your free consultation. Friday. I had been in horrible, excruciating pain for four straight months. The secret agony of John Tesh. The pain is real. Yeah. You know, and, and, and people, I will take a pain pill. Uh-uh, yeah. man, it's like taking an aspirin when you broke your leg. That stuff doesn't work. And you'll never believe how bad it got. She caught me um, on the floor at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I couldn't breathe, and I was just like, you know. <laughs> John Tesh makes a stunning confession Friday on The 700 Club. Some years ago on this program, we featured a guy named Pericone, Dr. Pericone, and he emphasized inflammation. And none of us were thinking too much about inflammation, but he was saying that this was really a serious health hazard. Well, now inflammation has risen to be public enemy number one when it comes to your health. The more doctors learn about it, the more they realize just how destructive it is. But there's good news. You can reduce the inflammation inside your body by controlling what you eat. Here's our health reporter, Laurie Johnson, with the lowdown on inflammation. No matter what type of health problem you're facing, chances are it began with inflammation. This internal irritation causes our whole body to break down. 
whether you have a wrinkle in your skin caused by an artery being inflamed or a wrinkle in your heart, a heart attack, or impotence, it's really the same process and it's all caused, or at least it starts with, that inflammation in your artery. Dr. Michael Roizen is the chairman of the world-famous Cleveland Clinic's Wellness Institute. He says inflammation is the silent killer that has eluded the medical community for years. And it's only recently that we've understood that it has a role, and only recently that it has a really important or prominent role in causing diseases such as cancer or in causing diseases such as heart attacks and strokes or of causing the in infectious diseases getting out of control that we now have. Doctors know for sure that inflammation causes all kinds of illness. But what causes inflammation? Mostly an unhealthy diet. One that includes sugary drinks, sweet food, and refined carbohydrates such as white bread, pasta, and rice. Also, hydrogenated oils, also known as trans fats, found in packaged foods, fast food, margarine, shortening, and most peanut butter. And the third highly inflammatory food group is omega-6 fats. Causes your arteries to get inflamed causes your immune system to get inflamed and decreases your ability to fight infections, decreases your ability to find cancer cells and get rid of them before they cause cancer, and increases inflammation and atherosclerosis in your arteries. So that's the omega-6s. Unfortunately, omega-6 fats are everywhere. We cook and bake with them. They're in packaged food, fast food, and restaurant food. But if you know how to spot them on the store shelves and in the list of ingredients, you can avoid them. Omega-6 fats are vegetable oils, such as soybean oil and corn oil, but also peanut oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, safflower and sunflower oils. So even though a certain food may contain zero dangerous trans fats, it may still be a bad choice because it's loaded with inflammatory omega-6 fats. A good example of this is store-bought salad dressing and mayonnaise. The truth is omega-6 fats are technically okay as long as you eat about the same amount of omega-3 fats. The problem is most Americans eat 25 times more omega-6s than omega-3s, and that imbalance causes massive inflammation. Omega-3 fats mostly come from seafood. The ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is important. The higher the ratio, the more omega-6 or the less omega-3, the more inflammation. There are only a few sources of omega-3 fats. Certain types of fish or fish oil capsules are the best. Other, less potent sources are walnuts, ground flaxseed, dark green leafy vegetables, and eggs fortified with omega-3s. Also, grass-fed meat is higher in omega-3s than grain-fed. Olive oil is a great way to reduce inflammation even though it's not technically an omega-3, but rather its cousin, omega-9. Omega-3, omega-7, omega-9, we don't know why the oddness is good, but that oddness means that it decreases inflammation. But be careful not to get olive oil too hot. What happens with all the oils once you get above their smoke point is you denature them. That is, you change their character. So instead of having omega-9, they become a different oil. And in fact, they have a different structure that may not be healthy. And in the case of olive oil, we don't believe is healthy. So that's why you don't want to go over the smoke point of any of the oils. So for optimal health, eat an anti-inflammatory diet, one that's low in sugar and other carbohydrates, trans fats and omega-6 fats, but high in the odd-numbered fats like omega-3 found in fish, omega-7 found in macadamia nuts, and omega-9, which is in olive oil. Wow. 
What a report. Laurie is here with us. Laurie, what you and Dr. Roizen are saying is that the American diet is just loaded with things that kill them. Absolutely. And you know, it's been said that 80% of the disease and illness that we face today is because of poor lifestyle choices. Yeah. So if we can get on this anti-inflammatory mm. diet, I guarantee people will live healthier lives. Well, you don't know it's there. I mean, you, you're eating along and you go to, to a fast food restaurant and you have a meal, you think, okay, this is cool. Right. But what they're doing is making your arteries inflamed? Absolutely, <laughs> and fast food, restaurant food, and packaged foods, the processed foods, yeah. those are the big three to avoid. You know, I must say, I used to think that safflower oil was one of the good guys instead of the bad guys, and now you all are saying that it's not really a bad one, but it's got to be in balance. Absolutely, that's, uh, that's true. Sense. Right, we were told that these certain um, oils were heart healthy, yeah. but we are eating way, way too many of them, and that disproportionality is what's causing massive inflammation, so we need to stop eating eating so many of the omega-6 fats. Those are the vegetable oils, right. the soybean oil especially. You know, it's been said that one-fifth of our total calorie intake is soybean oil, that one ingredient alone. So you really have to check that list of ingredients and look for soybean oil. Even though something may be trans fat free, mm -hmm. it still may be loaded with omega-6 right. fats. Inflammation. Now, what is it called? We're looking at dementia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking at heart of the artists, uh, atherosclerosis. We're looking at that various types of heart condition. We're looking at strokes. All of the above, arthritis, diabetes, even behavioral problems like aggression yeah. and ADD, ADHD, and autism. These are all associated with inflammation. And this is cutting edge stuff. And I think in the future, okay. we're going to be hearing more about the dangers of inflammation. How many women, I mean, when they go to the grocery store, I mean, their husband may be uh, aggressive and beat them or something, and it's because of what they're eating. <laughs> 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 Ladies, Kill the inflammation before he kills That's right. you. That's right. And there are six main causes of inflammation. Okay, and I really it. hope our viewers can get this. Now, you're a smart guy. You went to Yale, right? That doesn't make me smart, <laughs> but it did. It, it, it so to you, I'm going to quiz you. Oh. What are the main causes? There are six main causes of inflammation. What do you think they are? Well, I would always say the, the greatest culprit sugar. And yes. Beyond that is white flour. Yes. And of course, you got trans fats. Very good. So anyhow, that's okay, then, enough. And what did we talk about today? We talked about the uh, wrong oil. Omega-6. Uh, Omega-6 oil. And then there are a couple other things, too. A sedentary lifestyle, yeah. stress, and pollution, which is smoking and other okay. uh, toxins that are in the environment. So those are your main inflammatory problems and if you can get a handle on those stop eating the sugar the refined carbohydrates which are the white flours again the trans I, fats omega-6 fats fructose corn syrup we i know you had some expert that disagreed with me but more and more the, the research is showing that high fructose corn syrup has a uh, chemical in it that makes us want to eat more and it's, right. it causes fat. Right. Well, actually, all sugars are that way. Are. And actually, a lot of fat is that way, too. The more we eat, the more we want. They are addictive. And, uh, you know, God made our bodies perfectly, but he did not design them to be fed with 152 pounds of sugar a year, which hey, is what man. most Americans eat. That's just destructive. It causes massive inflammation and it causes our bodies to break down. It only makes sense. You know, the, the, the uh, low glycemic diet is the one, it's the low glycemic, the glycemic index. We've been talking about that for years, yes. but now more and more, it's, this is the stuff that is killing you. Right. And I might also add, Laurie, that if you have a dog, it obviously reduces your stress levels, which reduces your cortisol, which makes you thin. Right. Well, you know what else reduces stress is exercise. Amen. And again, God did not design our bodies to be sedentary. So if we exercise, we're killing two birds with one stone. Okay. We're moving, but also that's a natural stress reliever. Okay. Well, yesterday I rode a horse and 
Today I exercise the dog, and shortly thereafter I'm going to ride a horse again. Well, good. I'm not so sure how cardiovascular of an exercise that is. You need I'd... to ride the way I ride, and then you'll see. What All right. Is cardio. that an invitation? Yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> I, are I've invited. seen your horse farm. It's very impressive. Yeah, well, I like animals. That, that does something to you. The, the Reagan said the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man. But absolutely. Laurie, you're, one last thing. How much, you, you know, I found this omega thing. I wanted to really do it. So I was taking two tablespoons of concentrated cod liver oil, mm -hmm. and I finally read the label, and guess what? <laughs> they said your recommended allowance is one teaspoon. I was taking four times too much, and it gave me heartburn. Right. Well, cod liver oil, mm, uh, the, the best fish oil is from salmon or the fish oil capsules that you buy at the grocery store. And according to Dr. Roizen, what you want to do is look at the label. You'll see how much EPA and how much DHA okay. is in each capsule. You want to eat and or take about 750 milligrams of DHA a day. And so that usually works out to about three or four of those big fish oil capsules. I was taking three or four thousand a day, and I think it has a tendency to make you have a little heartburn. But anyway, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here. Do what Laurie says. Do what Dr. Royzen said. Live long, live healthy, and we'll go out at a hundred together. All right. All right, Terry. <laughs> thank Along you. with your dogs. Well, coming up, doctors discover the root cause of one baby's ear infection, a brain tumor entwined near his spinal cord. The type of tumor that he had is so aggressive that even through chemo it can grow. Uh, they called us into a meeting and said, this is very serious. He basically has a 10 to 30% chance of living. Hear how this child survived, and that's next. We have 100 call centers around the world taking prayer requests and praise reports every day. At the call center, I get to offer customer service, information, and prayer. 280 prayer staff take 10,000 calls a day. Personally, I take between 50 and 70. We get just about every kind of call you can imagine, from someone sharing a praise report that they've received healing from the Lord, to someone who is desperate and they feel they need to take their own lives. We make ourselves available and the Holy Spirit works through us to minister to people. I'm Doris Manuel. I'm a partner services representative and I work at CBN. Someone once said, life doesn't give do-overs, but that's not entirely true. What a remarkable comeback for Kurt Warner. I'm Kurt Warner. And I got a second chance that changed my life. I remember those feelings. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to fail. I want to give you an opportunity to chase after your dream. Seriously, guys? When you know you were meant to do something, you can't let life stand in your way. This is what I've been trying for so many years. I've been given a second chance. The Moment, a new reality series hosted by Kurt Warner, premieres Thursday, April 11th at 10, only on USA. Connie and I love having cell phones because of the freedom they give us. So why would we want to be tied down to a contract? Life's too short. And Consumer Cellular gives us control over how and when we use them and what we pay. And compared to our old plan, we're saving a ton of money every month. So what really sold us on Consumer Cellular was that they're the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members. AARP? That's a huge deal. Was it complicated to switch? Not a bit. They make it super simple. You can even keep your number. Oh, that's nice. Consumer Cellular, affordable service without the contracts. Try Consumer Cellular risk-free for 30 days with free activation, a $35 value, and free shipping. Or just pick it up at a Sears store. Plans start as low as $10 a month. Call Consumer Cellular at 1-800-393-4301. Go to ConsumerCellularTV.com or visit a Sears store today. Well, welcome back. You're watching the 700 Club on this. This is Thursday, isn't it? This is Thursday. This is Thursday. If okay. this is Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday and tomorrow's Friday, right? That mind of yours is just <laughs> like, like a, a steel trap. Like a steel <laughs> spring. <laughs> Ten-month-old Landon Sandrill couldn't stop crying. 
He had been the ideal baby, easygoing, not at all fussy, and incredibly cute. And so when he came, he became inconsolable, his family took him to the doctor. And the family was shocked with what the doctor found. A tumor the size of a golf ball sitting on the base of Landon's brain. He was a very sweet baby, quiet, um, not much bothered him. We were just startled. We were just absolutely startled. You know, it's, it's, you hear people say brain tumor, and you know, obviously it just conjures up the worst thing possible. Landon's mom's pretty young, so we were, we took a very active role in raising Landon and caring for him and, and just being around him. He was a good little guy. He slept well. He uh, ate well. He was, he was a good baby. About 10 months old, he had gotten an ear infection and he just started acting a lot different than normal. A lot more fussy, crying a lot more. The doctor said we have found what the problem is and she called me in and she showed me the x-ray and she said he's got a brain tumor in about four centimeters at the stem of his, at the back of his brain. They took him to ICU right away and they had him in surgery. Once we got through the initial phase and the initial uh, panic, we all started praying. We passed the word around. We were calling friends and family and telling them so they could be in prayer. The first thing they did is a temporary shunt because the brain tumor was blocking fluid from draining in his brain. Two and a half weeks after the temporary shunt was placed, that they did what's called a resection where they tried to go in and get the majority of the tumor out. And the tumor is like entwined, it was entwined um, they got probably 95% of, of the tumor. It was near his spinal cord, and if they had done anything more, they could have damaged his spinal cord and, and caused permanent physical damage, so they had to stop. Uh, they called us into a meeting. The surgeon and some medical people called us all in and said, this is very serious. He basically has a 10 to 30% chance of living. The type of tumor that he had is so aggressive that even through chemo it can grow. And even with the chemo treatment, there has a, a large potential for problems, physical problems later. There was roughly six rounds of chemo that he would he need to go through. And I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna listen to all this, but I'm gonna cling to God's word. That I was gonna lean on Jeremiah 29, 11, and that was gonna be the scripture that we were gonna hang our head on, no matter what they told us. You don't leave a 10-month-old baby alone in the hospital. And we really needed to call on our friends and our church families to help us out. Each round of chemo would be approximately a month period of time. And then they'd say you could go home. Well, we would come home for a couple of days and he would get sick or run a fever or vomit or whatever. And so we would need to take him back. Out of that whole period of time from October till June, we were home maybe a total of 10 days. We spent many time at the hospital thinking he may be an invalid. He may be in a wheelchair, he may not be able to hear, uh, he may not be able to eat, he didn't eat for 10 months, you know, we didn't know if he'd always have a feeding tube. We really didn't know where we were gonna be at the end of this. It was scary, it was really scary. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, and uh, we picked the scripture out and I decided I was gonna make a little banner or poster that we could put in the rooms to kind of always kind of stay focused on that. When we got home after all the chemo, Landon was in isolation for 90 days. Went back for a routine follow-up MRI in August, and they discovered that there was just an, a misalignment at the top of his spine, right at the very base of his neck. But we discovered that he had an instability of his spine. They really did not want to do the surgery and fuse the spine because that would put a metal rod in there, which would block the sight of any remnant of tumor that was there. They decided they were gonna put the brace on him so they built a custom-made brace from his neck to his waist that he wore basically 24-7. Probably about a year and a half later, the brace reduced to a neck brace, so it was mid-chest to neck. We were going to CHKD for the MRIs every three months, and then eventually the three months went to six months. The six months went to nine months. The nine months went to a year. And what has happened as a result of the cervical spine instability is Landon's bone has fused together and it has grown and it has stabilized and he never needed the surgery. So he never had it. 
Sometimes I just look at them and I just say, thank you, God. Thank you for your word. And thank you for what you did in there. He's in second grade. He's doing great. I like math and art. Math and art. I like music. I like computers. I can play Wii baseball. Yay! I like going outside and play. He's played a couple seasons of soccer. I can kick the ball around. We do tennis, ride bikes, normal, normal kid stuff. I have tiny wheels. I still can't ride straight. It's very nice. I pray at church. I pray at once at home. I also pray at night. Without faith, you know, a long time ago, I would have given up. I've learned to really, really trust on God's Word and to rely on it. And when I have nothing else to hold on to, I hold on to God's Word because His Word is true. The plans that I have for you to give you a future and a hope. Isn't that one? I mean, God can do some exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Terry, you've got a report. I do. This is Louisa who lives in Newport News, Virginia. She had terrible swelling and pain in her foot. One day she was watching this program and we were praying for the audience and right as she got up to leave the room, she thought, God, what about me? And at that moment, Pat, you said, you just said, Lord, what about me? And God <laughs> is healing your foot fungus. She said she was amazed. She checked her foot. The swelling was gone down. She's been healed. Yeah, it's so interesting how God wants us to know that yes. He sees us. He sees and hears and understands. <laughs> We've got a great God. Yeah. He's everywhere and He loves you. So in any event, uh, I guess, let's see, do I have something here that, to share as well? This is uh, from Abilene, Texas. Mandy had a very bad indigestion after the birth of her child. The doctor diagnosed her with acid reflux. And due to her finances, she could not continue to see the doctor for treatments. She tried everything. Nothing helped. And one day, she was watching the program as you heard Terry give a word. You have extreme acid reflux. and You have had it a long time. God's healing you. Instantly, the acid reflux was gone, and she hasn't had a problem since. Praise God. We're going to pray for you. What do you need? God is there. He's, he's there. He's like the air we breathe. He's there. He's God the Father. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. And he says, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do. Let's come to the Father. Terry and I will join hands. We're going to pray for you. Father, we don't understand the mystery of godliness. We don't understand the wonder of your love. But Lord, it isn't for us to understand, but for us to believe. And we believe in your power. We believe in your grace. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak the word of faith. Someone has a neck muscle. It's very sore. Put your head on it right now. The Lord just healed it. You feel it? It's just like an intense pain. It's so painful to touch. Touch it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Terry. Someone else, you have a broken heart yes. today. I, I don't know what the cause of that is. It has something to do with a relationship that has ended, but uh, you feel like you just almost can't go on, like there's no hope for your future. And today, the joy of the Lord is going to enter into your heart and your mind, and you're just going to begin to see life as the gift it is again. You've got a, a muscle in your back, and it's into your neck, and you have headaches, and you have all kinds of muscle spasms and, and, and strain. But right now, God is taking away the strain. Your back is going to be completely whole. You want to stand up straight in the name of Jesus. Terry. And someone else, you have a deteriorating hip socket and uh, have just been, you haven't had anything done with it surgically yet, but God's healing that condition for you. You're just going to suddenly notice you're not limping and you don't have that ache, that deep, deep bone ache in your hip anymore. The word despair comes to me. Uh, many of you in despair, you despair. You've lost hope. You don't despair. God is there to give you a future and a hope. Do not despair, but hope in the Lord 
and he will yet come and deliver you from your problems. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. amen. Folks, that's all the time we've got for those uh, prayer requests, but you can call in any time during the day, 1-800-759-0700. We're here for you. And uh, I'm going to be answering some of your questions. You are. We're going to take your email questions. Uh, Sarah wants to know, when we go to heaven, will we still be in love with our spouse? Stay tuned for another edition of Bring It On. That's coming up next. When you care, souls are set free. When you give, lives are made new. When you share, eternal life begins. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. It felt like nothing at first, but then it started getting worse and worse. In like a week, it started to hurt. I saw a pretty bad infection, so I kind of got upset and, and really scared. She thought I would, if I wouldn't do something about it, it would eat my toe off, literally. I record the 700 Club every day, so I was watching it, and I heard Terry say, There's someone, um, a parent, you're praying for a child named Timothy. God has heard your prayer, and the thing you've asked for will be done. And it was just such a personal word of knowledge. I just got really emotional. I thought that it would get healed in a couple of days, and I was really happy. But it turned out it got healed in a couple of hours, actually. I did see a change right away. I felt really good because I could run with Mom on the jogging trails, and I could do all the stuff that I wanted to do before. Someone once said, life doesn't give do-overs, but that's not entirely true. What a remarkable comeback for Kurt Warner. I'm Kurt Warner, and I got a second chance that changed my life. I remember those feelings. Yeah, I didn't want to fail. I want to give you an opportunity to chase after your dream. Seriously? Yes. When you know you were meant to do something, you can't let life stand in your way. This is what I've been trying for so many years. I've been given a second chance. The Moment, a new reality series hosted by Kurt Warner, premieres Thursday, April 11th at 10, only on USA. Welcome to Washington for the CBN News Break. Legislators in Indiana are tightening restrictions on some abortion clinics. The state house passed a measure requiring clinics that provide drug-induced abortions to meet the same standards as those that do surgical procedures. A spokesman for Planned Parenthood says the new rules aren't necessary and could force at least one Indiana clinic to stop distributing the abortion pill. Christians in Nigeria are appealing for prayers after a new round of violence against believers. Attacks during the Easter season left as many as 80 people dead. More than 4,000 others were left displaced. And since Easter, at least 19 people were killed after a gunman attacked a predominantly Christian group. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. If you've been thinking about financial options for your retirement, maybe how to provide some real security for you and your family, you really ought to consider a reverse mortgage with AAG. In uncertain times, it's a safe, effective financial tool. It's already being used by hundreds of thousands of other Americans. It allows you to eliminate monthly mortgage payments, pay some bills, or simply enjoy your retirement more. A government-insured reverse mortgage with AEG allows seniors to stay in their home and turn their equity into tax-free cash. To qualify, there are no credit score requirements. And remember, you continue to retain complete ownership of your home. Call 1-800-789-8635 to receive a new special edition handbook featuring reverse mortgage borrowers, plus an educational brochure and DVD presented by Fred Thompson absolutely free. Find out more. Call AAG today. Call 1-800-789-8635 now. The sun used to make our outdoor deck and patio space so hot and uncomfortable, we couldn't use it. But then we discovered the Sunsetter Retractable Awning. Our Sunsetter Retractable Awning opens and closes in just 60 seconds. It keeps our patio about 20 degrees cooler. 
It provides instant shade and instant protection from the sun's harmful rays. And our sunsetter costs under $700. But now you can get your sunsetter for as little as $499 when you call now to get the special $200 discount certificate and free awning idea kit. We love our sunsetter retractable awning, and you're going to love yours too. Sunsetter awnings are assembled in America and guaranteed to last for years. So call now to get this free awning idea kit with DVD plus your $200 Sunsetter discount certificate. But this is a limited time offer. Call now. Call now for your free awning idea kit with DVD and $200 discount certificate. There's no obligation. 1-800-201-0421. Friday. I had been in horrible, excruciating pain for four straight months. The secret agony of John Tesh. The pain is real. Yeah. You know, and, and, and people, I will take a pain pill. Uh-uh, yeah. man, it's like taking an aspirin when you broke your leg. That stuff doesn't work. And you'll never believe how bad it got. She caught me um, on the floor at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I couldn't breathe, and I was just like, you know. <laughs> John Tesh makes a stunning confession Friday on The 700 Club. To see this week's most viewed stories, go to CBN.com. Time to answer some of your email questions as we bring it on today. Pat, the first one is from Sarah, who says, When we get to heaven, will we no longer be in love with our spouse? This scares me because I love my spouse and I still want to love him in eternity. Sarah, I think you'll be there to love your spouse, but uh, the love that we have for human beings is going to be subsumed by the love we have for God. Uh, the love is going to be so intense for the Lord because we'll see Him as He is and we'll be transformed. And Jesus did say that in heaven we're going to be like the angels. So in a sense, there won't be any male-female, uh, you know, sexual activity. Uh, but we'll be like angels. And of course, there'll be love, but it may not be the same kind of love you currently experience. All right. This is Will who says, I have recently been confused about the effect of sin on salvation. Does sin stop a person from going to heaven? And if yes, then how? Well, I'm pointed back to David. I quoted yesterday, and I think it's one that we can continue to refer to. David had sex with Bathsheba, somebody else's wife. She got pregnant to cover it up. He had her husband killed, murdered by other forces in battle, lied about the whole thing. And the Bible says, and the Lord was not pleased. He lost one child, was killed, another daughter raped. And another one had a rebellion against him. It was a horrible mess. But when it was all finished, David, it's in the Psalms, he says, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit was still there, which meant that his ultimate salvation was still there, but he didn't, he didn't have any joy. But if you go into sin, you'll lose your joy. <clears throat> you'll lose your consciousness that you are a child of God. Do you then lose your salvation? No. But once that consciousness is removed, who knows where you might go after that? And the word for sin in, in Greek is hamartia. And it, it's the concept of missing the mark. You're shooting for the target and you miss the mark. That's what sin is. You're, so we all sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We all sin. Uh, but the question is going into deliberate rebellion against God. And, and also repentance, don't you think? Because David did repent. I of course mean, he when repented. confronted. Oh, I mean, against he, thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. I mean, he was mm -hmm. terribly broken up by what he did. He knew he'd sinned. So there was a time of repentance. He didn't continue in rebellion. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't sit here and say, okay, <laughs> you can keep on sinning. Do whatever you want to do, and, and once saved, always saved. I, I just don't buy it. I, I just believe that if we're going to, you know, it's like getting married. You're going to say to your spouse, you just had a wedding ceremony, and now, how much adultery can I get away with before you walk out on me? Mm -hmm. No. 
I love you. I've given myself to you. I belong to you. You belong to me. I want to do whatever I can to please you. That's the attitude of somebody who's saved. Yeah, kind of relationship, relationship, relationship. Right? It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, this is Faith, who says, an elder in my church told me that I could not serve God by volunteering in the church because my husband refuses to go to church. I don't understand this logic. Wouldn't it be a good thing that I still want to serve despite the fact that my husband isn't a Christian? I can't be responsible for his actions, but I am for my own. Does the Bible say anything about this? Of course it does. It talks about uh, an unbelieving spouse. Uh, a spouse uh, can be won to the Lord by the godly conduct of uh, his, his spouse. Um, you are a handmaiden of the Lord. You belong to the Lord. And the fact that your husband is, is an ungodly sinner doesn't keep you from performing something in the church. I get, we're getting so many letters from people who, in these crazy churches who are not taught the Bible. Read the Word. It's so clear. I've never heard anybody told that before. That's really strange. Oh, you know, they, people are being taught things that you just can't believe, and you, you, you're appalled by the lack of wisdom. If you just read the Bible. Uh, but uh, godly women, you know, uh, have been throughout history. Women of God have been women of faith. They've had husbands who aren't necessarily godly, but they are, and yeah. God honors that. All right. Yeah, this is sweet. This is Aaron. He says, Hi, Pat. I'm 12 years old. I just rededicated my life. I never really read my Bible before, but I'm starting now. I'm wondering how many chapters does God expect <laughs> me to read at a time? I want to make sure God is happy with me. Aaron, God loves you because you love him, and he's died for you, and you are precious in his sight, regardless of how many chapters in the Bible you read. Uh, it's a question of let the Bible speak to you. Sometimes you can read one verse and read it over and over again, and it just begins to sing in your heart mm -hmm. and draws you close to him. And other times you might uh, read a lot more. I recommend you start in the Gospel of John. It's easy Greek, and it's easy to understand, and it's, it's a love letter. And then get into the book of Acts and into the letters of the Apostle Paul. And then you can go into the Old Testament. Some of that's a little difficult to understand, and, you know, you don't, it's not going to bless you as much as the, uh, the New Testament. Okay, this is uh, Sean, who says, My daughter has recently started dating an atheist at college. She's now lost all interest in going to church and over the Easter holiday of all times. I overheard her trying to teach my nine-year-old son what she believes. I fear she's lost her way. I desperately need your advice on how to handle this delicate situation. Um, I think the thing you need to do is to love her, to tell her she's wrong, to tell her that God is real, and that she will learn about the reality of God, and you'll never stop praying for her. And I think that's more than anything else. Which and is, maybe with that nine-year-old, to pray with the nine-year-old for exactly. his sister. But don't let her get away with it. Don't, don't let her say, well, what you think is okay, and uh, there are many ways to salvation and all that stuff. Don't let her go along with that. Say, listen, God's real, Jesus is real, and you're going to find out, and I'm praying for you, and I love you because I'm your mother, your father, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not going to let you hold those beliefs, and I'm certainly not going to let you infect your nine-year-old brother. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program. Tomorrow, sportscaster, music legend, great friend, John Tesh is going to tell us why he tried to kill himself because of the pain, but what stopped him? And today we leave you today with these words from 1 Corinthians. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. I'd like to tell you about Orphan's Promise. Orphan's Promise helps children who've had tragic beginnings in life. My father died. My mother started drinking and gave me away to the orphanage. We were homeless, and she made me beg for food. We don't know where our sister is. I'm looking for her now. We want to return to be with our mother, but she doesn't want us. 
In many countries, children are turned out of orphanages when they turn 16. They lose the only security they've ever known. Many will become easy prey for prostitution rings and criminal gangs. Together, you and I can break this cycle for these kids. For just $20 a month, you'll provide computer training, life skills, and people that care, preparing them for a future of hope. Show them God's love. Call the number on your screen right now and say you'll help.